Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're gonna to do something we haven't done in a little while and that's just have a fun range day. And we're titling this video horse trading. And that's because Jason and I just finished up going by a local gun shop and doing some horse trading. When you're a gun collector, you don't always have money. But if you're a collector for 30 years like myself, I have a lot of guns. And sometimes I've collected firearms don't really want to get rid of, but something pops on my radar that will pry them loose from me, which I don't deem to be all that collectible to trade for a true collectible. And that's what Jason and I did today. Jason definitely made out like a champ, but I think I did too. So what we have on the table here, guys, are the fruits of our horse trading. Right here, we have a Russian 1937 Izvesk. All numbers matching, Mosin Nagant. I mean, we've seen a lot of these, right guys? But they're going up in value, probably worth about $300 in today's market. And we're gonna go through Jason's stuff first because he got three things. This is a 336 Marlin, but this one's called the Revolution. And this would have been manufactured by Marlin for another company that would have sold it on uh, through either a big box store or even per perhaps sold it online. This is from the 1960s, uh, probably before 1968 in the Gun Control Act back when you could actually sell guns and buy them through mail order and have them directly delivered to your house. And then he picked up a modern collectible because we'll probably never see these again on the US market. And this is a Vepper and its original factory configuration. This one's chambered in 54R. So those are what Jason picked up. Well, Jason was in horse trading for these and our buddy who's the manager of the store goes, hey Tim, how deep is your pockets today? And when he says things like that to me, it scares me. And I said, they're not very deep, man. What do you got? He goes, hey, grab that thing out of the case and show it to Tim. If you guys are into World War II stuff like I am, you probably already know what's inside this holster. This is an original holster, bears the marks of Nazi Germany. This holster, I believe, is a 1937 holster, dated holster. Inside, I have a 1939 42 marked, so this is an early war production, 42 marked, which makes it a Mauser Luger, 9mm Luger. So this is an early war example of a Mauser produced handgun. We know that because of the 42 coating on the, the toggle. Uh, that, that's done or was done by the Germans to kind of confuse the allies as to what factory actually produced the firearm. So they give them numeric codes so they wouldn't know that it was Mauser, but we now know it's a Mauser. Nice thing about this, I would say it's in probably 95% condition. We have some holster wear on the front, which is common. We have some holster wear on the edges and on the muzzle, but it also has, it's all numbers matching. It has a all numbers matching magazine that makes it rare it has so this is a, a 1939 dated gun with a 1937 dated leather holster inside we have something i've never come across before in my life and that's another matching serial numbered magazine this gun the springs on it are still nice and tight and uh, it's in perfect functioning condition and i traded three guns to get this one because i didn't have the money for it but in my opinion, it was an awesome trade. So that's what today's all about, guys. We're gonna do some shooting with our new horse trading acquisitions and just have some fun and uh, give you some history on some of these guns. The Vepper you know about, the Mosin you know about. We'll let Jason talk about the Marlin and I'm gonna talk about my dirty Nazi. Let's start shooting. Lugers have become something of collectible items over the years. When I was a kid in high school, they were pretty much all over the place at gun shows and stuff, and they were fairly affordable, but you, know, you go fast forward 30 years, and now they've become harder to find and find them in good condition. And so they're really solid investment pieces. I stumbled across this Luger at a local gun shop. Uh, this gun shop takes in a lot of trades, and they had it for a... Uh, a price I think it was undervalued. This handgun with its holster, with its two magazines, with matching serial numbers in the condition it's in, I would place 
probably I'd start opening bids on gun broker at 3,500 bucks and I would expect people to bid it up from there. That's how valuable this handgun is. Now I got the gun for less than that, quite a bit less than that, but I had to trade for it because I just didn't have a couple grand in the bank. So I traded three guns to get my hands on this one. That's why we're calling this horse trading video. And that's not uncommon for us in, in the gun buying community. I try not to get rid of guns. I hate getting rid of them. But when something like this crosses my radar and I don't have the money, I start looking for stuff to trade. So why is this gun so particularly valuable? Well, this one's in really good shape. It has its typical holster wear, but the fact it has its original holster which is just a couple years off in date. It's a 37 dated holster, a 39 dated handgun. And the fact that it has inside the holster itself, which is still in very good condition, the leather's still pliable, stitching is still really strong. Inside here, we have the little tool that they, they came with which many times is missing, gets lost over the years from the GIs that liberated them. Of course, the gun has no import marks. This would have been home, uh, brought home by the soldier that captured it. Very much, uh, it's very likely, I should say, that this handgun was liberated from a dead German that no longer needed it. And the fact that it has two serial number matching magazines is just, like I said earlier, unheard of. And so, yeah, I simply couldn't live without it, so I parted with things I figured I could live without. The Luger is probably one of my favorite handguns to shoot. It's a, uh, a toggle action. I've explained this gun in depth in the past, but it's a, it's a very unique, um, at the time, at the turn of the century, it was one of the earliest automatics. Based on the Brochart, this gun was an evolution of that. And in World War I, this would have been the epitome of, of modern technology. By World War II, the gun had been surpassed in terms of better designs, but it was still commonly worn, especially by officers and high-ranking folks. Uh, by that time, it wasn't necessarily a frontline handgun. You would find them on the front lines, but, you know, there were better handguns by World War II. Now, I know you guys are going to say that, you know, the guys over at Forgotten Weapons or InRange TV had done a mud test on one of these and proved it's like the most reliable handgun ever made. But if you're a true Luger collector, you know the truth about the handguns. They're finicky, and once they start to get dirty, they don't work all that well. They're not modern, reliable handguns. They are very, very particular about the ammo they feed and very particular about being reliable. You just get them dirty with carbon and they'll start making, you know, having malfunctions. So it has an eight round magazine in it. We're gonna go ahead and fire it now for the first time. You grab it by its toggle, pull it back, let it go. And like I said, the springs are really, really good on this thing. Usually you'll get them and they may be a little bit weak springed and the grips are, would be typically loose. Everything's tight on the handgun, which means this gun was probably carried more than it was shot and that makes it a really, really good shooting handgun. So hopefully the sights are on. We're about 15 yards away from our challenge target. And let's just see if the sights are gonna put this thing dead center or not. That looks like she works like a champ. Uh, yeah. So anyway, the sights seem to be pretty much on, maybe just a little off to the right. I'll have to fire it a few more times, but that was the first magazine out of the gun, perfect function, locked open. So now that I have a second magazine, now what's kind of cool is um, you can buy modern Luger magazines, because a lot of times you're gonna find the guns that have really, really worn out magazines, but look at the condition of the magazine, guys. It's, it's in good a condition. Both of these look identical, or as in good a condition as the handgun, which again, is very uncommon. Most of the Lugers I buy have very worn parts. So this gun, like I said, likely was carried more than it was shot. And there you go, there's a malfunction guys, not uncommon. There you go. So we're shooting some 124 grain ball ammo. Uh, this is Freedom Munitions. And we have pretty good luck with this stuff, but like I said, the Lugers guys can be very temperamental. Uh, the gun does have some oil on it. I might wanna put a little bit more on it if I'm gonna shoot it a whole bunch more this afternoon. You wanna keep them well lubricated because the guns are very, very tightly fit. When you take a look at these things, the original German guns that were used during the war will all be nine millimeter and they'll have serial numbers, the last two digits of the serial number on every single part, even the safety lever has a 55 on it, the side plate has a 55 on it, the takedown lever has a 55 on it, the toggle 
has the 42, that's Mauser Manufacturing, has a, the, the extractor has a 55 on it. The rear has a 55 on it, just behind the rear sight. Even to the trigger, when you take the side plate off, will have a 55 on it. Everything is serial numbered, right down to the magazines, which has 55. And take a look at the other magazine, and there's your 55. So, yeah, they marked every single part on the guns. What an incredible find. I absolutely love this thing. I don't know how much more I'm gonna shoot it. And uh, yeah, I'll probably put one or two more magazines through it just for the sake of doing it. I'm probably gonna put a little bit more lubrication on it just to make sure everything's working smoothly. And then I'm gonna put it away and just kind of handle it every once in a while and bring it out maybe once a year just to shoot it for fun. I'll keep this short guys youtube is making it harder and harder for gun channels to exist on their platform and that's in a number of different ways first of all they censor our content pretty heavily and they demonetize our videos a great way to support us at the military arms channel is to swing by and become a patron supporter over on patreon you get all sorts of behind the scenes information giveaways deals on all sorts of stuff from copper custom just swing by check out patreon.com forward slash military arms another great way to support us is to go buy our Forged From Freedom t-shirt store. There's a link down in the description below. If you'd like to have this full semi-automatic t-shirt, it can be yours. Just follow the link down below. Thanks for supporting us, guys. All right, so Tim's Luger, absolutely amazing. When I was at the gun store, you know, I was looking for cheap and expensive guns, even collectible guns, modern collectibles, if you will. I stumbled across this Revelation Model 200. And uh, we'll show you on the side here, it says Revelation Model 200, Western Auto Supply Company. Had this uh, weaver scope on it with some weaver, weaver rings. But what these things were based off of, essentially they're made by Marlin, I believe. At least this is using some online forums. Made by Marlin and marketed to box stores such as Kmart, Sears, even mail order stuff. And a lot of the folks are saying these things are produced early 60s, so 1960, 1965, 67 or so. But it's chambered in 3030 wind. And I've already got six loaded in the magazine tube here. Wouldn't take seven. We're gonna go ahead and give this thing a whirl here. Now, this is literally out of the store, so I have no idea if this scope's gonna hit anything. <laughs> but let's give it a shot. Nope. There we go. Just kind of quartering the target, if you will, to see if I can get it to hit. All right, so I was aiming it pretty much right shoulder, just right of the head to get any hits on it. I have to see if the uh, scope adjusts by putting it on paper one of these days, but I think I might put this in the running for the cheap gun selection because I got this thing for $165. So I'm pretty happy with it. As a matter of fact, a lot of folks have these in their families as the, the deer rifle, if you will, leaning up against the wall or in uh, dad's gun rack or grandpa's gun rack. You see a lot of these up there and people seem to be really satisfied with them so i plan to take this one clean it up a little bit it's got a lot of surface rust and wear on it but i think it ought to clean up nicely i know the guys over at copper ought to be able to re-blue it if i wanted it to so very cool piece another one of the guns that i picked up during my horse trading was this uh Mosinagant here now this one here is a 1937 stamped Izzy, and what was really neat about these is they're all numbers matching. They had a bunch of them there, which is surprising to see. I remember picking these things up uh, for around 75 bucks, 99 bucks. So the prices have gone up on these things, but this one had really nice wood and uh, discreet uh, import marks on it. And you know, the numbers matched. It came with a, uh, a bayonet and also looks like an ammo pouch here. So I thought it was pretty neat. I'm going to do some shooting with it with some 148 grain tool ammunition. This is just some full metal jacket stuff here. Fires from a five round internal magazine. 
And let's see if the sights are on on this thing. I'm 100 yards out, aiming at a challenge target. Mm. Do the same thing, quarter up the target here. Might have to move up closer or get it on paper. Well, looks like I got two guns to move up closer and put on paper to see where they're hitting and then make some sight adjustments from there. I'm just kind of winging it here at 100 yards to see if I can hit it, but who knows. Either way, still an absolute blast to shoot. You know, I say, just like Tim always says, get them while you can. Because this one here, it's about 250 bucks now. So definitely going up in price, but very cool. Sometimes putting the bayonet on these old rifles will shift the point of aim. So what I'm gonna try to do we just use a dead hold and see if the sights are actually on with the bayonet affixed to the rifle. And what do you know? And ladies and gentlemen, putting the bayonet on it, re-zeroed the rifle. Five for five. <laughs> Love it. All right, last but not least, just a regular Vepper. 7.62 by 54R. This was another one of the horse trades that I did. So I went for three, three guns. Now this one here was a used one that they had on there. And I really pushed on the price and I got this one for 600 bucks. So I really can't complain. I really like shooting 54R and the Vepers, they're not coming in anymore. So get them while you can. I mean, what a neat, neat rifle. And I know Chase over at Definitive Arms when he gets all things wrapped up that maybe one day he can uh, accurize this thing. But I know he's got a lot of work on his hands trying to get some good stuff out there. So. This one fires from a five round magazine. Go ahead and load it up here. And again, I have no idea where this one's gonna hit. So we got it at one and we'll see if it's somewhat zeroed. Well, how about that? The third one, I finally hit some steel on just the first round fired. That is cool. Gotta say though, these things got a pretty good wallop to them. Got one more mag loaded up here. Missed that last one there, but I know I'm happy. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I mean, horse trading is just part of gun collecting. Sometimes you'll stumble across something like that Luger, for example, that is really something I've never seen before. It has two matching serial numbered magazines and I didn't have the money for it. And I would have had nightmares about having let that slip through my fingers. So I had to make a move. And sometimes that's just part of gun collecting. 
Jason does it a lot. I don't do it as much. And Jason had to remind me when I saw the pistol, he's like, dude, you have guns, you can trade for it. Cause the thought never even crossed my mind because I don't like giving up firearms. And so sometimes it's just part of collecting. Guys, thank you for watching the channel. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms channel, you can do that by swinging by and checking out coppercustom.com. It's our online store. Also, thank you for 10 glorious years here on YouTube. We hope to be here for another 10. We never know with YouTube politics, but that's our goal anyway. We really appreciate all the support you guys have given us over the years, and we look forward to seeing you guys here again very soon. Thanks for watching.